When I first started talking to you about the idea, what was your sort of gut instinct? Well, I think probably first of all it was, well, that's not a surprise because yeah. it's you and there's a path that people go on and then there's this other path. <laughs> the campo wants to go on. Yeah. And has that not always since probably, I don't know, you were a baby, I guess. So I guess it wasn't a surprise. And I think I probably always knew you'd do it. Did you though? I think Did you so. actually think? Well, because yeah, you, when you say you're going to do something, I can't think of things that you've said you're going to do and then you don't do. We're on a mission to discover if there's a better way. <laughs> there's been some stress along the, the way which has stressed everybody out, of course, worried us all. But now you're kind of through, through that, um, I think, well, I think it's really exciting. I think it's scary too, I mean, but as you know, great things don't come out of comfort, they come out of extreme discomfort. And we all, I'm a firm, firm believer in that. And that's why so many people just live these lives, don't they? Because they're so scared of doing anything that's mm just vaguely off the, off the path. Um, and I think, you know, what's your, I often think about what's the worst, what's the downside to it really? For you, as you said once, I think it's, well, we'll get this amazing year away and you're extraordinarily resilient. So you'll come back and whatever comes of it, you'll come back and you'll make, you know, you'll restart life in some way. And the worst case is that You've had an incredible year traveling the world, showing your girls and Katie mm. the world in a different way to live. So I suppose, so what was my gut when you told me about it? Um, yeah, I, I guess a sense of excitement for you with a dash of worry. Mm. Okay, so that's cool. I, lo I love hearing about that and now, what about the sort of principles that we're kind of basing the project on? Maybe let's start with the community question. How important yeah. do you think community is yeah. in that um, matrix of happiness? Oh, I think it's enormous. And I think we certainly realised that during COVID in our, in our lockdown, you know, at home where we are, when suddenly we were out every evening walking in the community and chatting to people, mm. chatting to our neighbours, which you, you just never do because we all live these lives where we don't even know who lives next door to us. Mm. Which is completely uncertain when you actually stop to think about it, when you've got all these people around you. So I think COVID definitely for us was a real, we've got this amazing community around us and we don't do anything about it. I mean, every year, every year I say we're going to have a Christmas party and we're going to invite all the neighbours and we never do it. Yeah. So, yes, I think having that and I suppose the life that we live in Cayman is probably more community minded in many ways because when you're an expat, your friends become your family. And where we live, our, fa our friends are right, cl they're, they're so close to us, you know, it's not like you live in London and your friends are, you know, an hour. Our friends are two minutes around the corner. So although it might not be our direct neighbor, we have got a real sense of community, which I think is what's led us to be out there for so long in that, that our friends there have become, they've become like family in a mm. way that I don't know you get that anywhere else other than being an expat in a really small place and a really small community. Mm. So happiness absolutely is, is, I mean, there's that amazing Harvard study, I don't know if you know that one where they've, it's the longest study into happiness and I think it goes back to the 1920s when they started studying a cohort of men to start with and then later they added women. And they looked at them all the way through their life, generation after generation, and see what made people happy. And it, t every single generation, it's the quality of the relationships. And there's nothing else that actually matters. Mm. And I think about this all the time, because from what I do, you know, I'm helping people with money. I know it's not money that makes, I know it's not money that makes you happy. I know it's not stuff that makes you happy. Mm -hmm. It's who you have around you and how, how, strong those relationships are with the people around you. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. So um, a lot of the reason that 
we're doing what we're doing is, is based on, you know, history, family, the way that I think about the world, etc. And when I think about mum and dad, for instance, I think about the way we treat old people generally mm. and this mm. kind of model that we have slept walked, I think, in, into in the UK, whereby suddenly we're locking our old people up, mm. you know, in old people's homes the mm. moment that it's inconvenient, mm. off, they go, off they go. The other, the other thing that I find extraordinary is that I think we've now conditioned a lot of old people, and I've heard mum and dad say it, right? that there's this mindset of them, I don't want to be a, a burden, a burden yeah. right? Yeah. And I think it's uniquely, not uniquely British, I think it's happening a lot in Western culture, but it's not the way it is all around the world, no. is it? You know, and so I'm yeah, interested in, in how, you, how you think about, specifically about the problem from a society perspective, but also about, let's, let's look at us, let's mm. look at our mum and dad and what we're doing about making sure that we're looking after them and being connected, yeah. right? Because the thing that worries me about our family is that whilst we love each other and we're incredibly close, we're disconnected, right? Just yeah. physically. Physically disconnected. So how yeah. do we then, how do we make sure that we're... Looking after them. Looking after yeah. them, right? It's, it's a challenge. Yeah. Well, as you know, you know, we're hoping to have a place at home where they can have their own space and come and be with us for at mm. least part of the year, you know, out of the cold English winter into, into the warmth of the Caribbean. Yeah. At you know, that perfect time of year and for them to have their own space, but yet to be right there with us. Um, yeah, it's very hard. I mean, as you say, when you look at non-Western societies, it's the whole village is all in there together. Mm. And for the kids to be around their grandparents, which we grew up with, of course, with our grand and pop right there. I mean, every single night, when you think what we did, mm. every single night, we went through the door, went down the stairs and said good night to them. Amazing. It was part of our, that was part of our ritual, wasn't it? And wasn't and it And it was such a great part of the day. I mean, you looked forward to it so much, especially if the sweet, you might time it at the right time and the sweetie drawer was being opened just as you went down or pop felt like reading you a bedtime story. But every night, and then, you know, later on, when we were in the in-between stage between Frog Hole and um, Austin's, when we had Granny right, you know, right there, so close to us. Yeah. We had that model, didn't we? We had, inter yeah. we yeah. had intergenerational yeah. living. Yeah. We lived there, and it's yeah. perhaps why I'm so sort of not, well, I am a bit obsessed about it, yeah. right? Because I, I, cause I think we're, we're getting it wrong at the yeah. minute. And, and yeah. that's a big part yeah. of this project, yeah. right? Yeah. Is trying to work out, like, how can we create? Yeah. And it's a win for everybody. Because yeah. as kids, you, it, it was such part of our childhood, every single night going to say goodnight to them. For Gran and Pop, it must have been, you know, mostly lovely at the end of every day having us little ones come down. And I've never really thought about this, but, you know, for mum particularly, putting five kids to bed, to be able to say, go say goodnight to Grand and Pop and probably they got yeah. 10 or 15 minutes of peace and quiet at the end of the day and the, before uh, we came back and actually went to bed. And the other thing that I think is fundamental is that when you just think about the pattern of life, when you think about old people, old people suddenly are given a gift of time as a general rule, mm. right, mm. that parents mm. don't necessarily mm. have. Mm. And so therefore to have those little ones with paired with... Yep. People, with, People the time. with the time and the wisdom and the wisdom. I mean that yeah. it, that is yeah. There's, so, the, I think there's so the magic, much and we're yeah. losing it, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, well, cool. Well, we're going to end the, the communing with the Campbells bit with one last question. So, um, as my dear sister uh, that I know loves us, what's your biggest worry in relation to? You? what we're doing what we're doing or do you not really think of that yeah for, for me it's probably financial yeah of course the financial side of it for you and how you know how you had the business and now that's gone and how you know how you as the father and the you know look after your family really which i know i know i've said you're so resilient i know you'll do it i mean you've you've mm. you know it will be fine, but I worry about that for you. Yeah, well, 
Just so you know, that's my biggest worry. Well, yeah. Right, it always has been. And, and it's, I know it's something that we've spoken about a lot, right? Yeah. Because, you know, I'm a person that um, leads with my heart, not with my head. And the financial side of this project has always been the big the problem, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, the big worry. But ultimately, I had to make the decision about whether I was going to let that dictate yeah. the future of because if you look, look Which is at why no one does anything in life. Yeah. It's always about the money. Yeah, it's because always if you the money look worry. At every business book, mm. it's what's the most difficult thing in business? First million pounds of turnover. Yeah. We were yeah. just about there. Yeah. And now we're you know, I'm walking yeah. away from yeah. it. Yeah. And it's you know, so I, I have that in my head and in my heart actually, because ultimately all you really yeah. want to do is look after your kids. Yeah. But there's this bigger thing mm -hmm. and I've suddenly feel purpose that mm -hmm. I've never felt, mm -hmm. I've mm -hmm. never felt so much purpose in my life. And with that will come the financial rewards. That's what you hope, right? I think so. Yeah, fingers yeah. crossed. And I, you're so right, Cambo, because, you know, in the conversations I have with people around money, the worry of money limits people in what they do every single day. You know, people want to do different stuff. They want a different path to the path that they've chosen, yet they feel like they can't do it because... Trapped. Yeah, because of the money. And so to actually just take that out of it and have done it anyway is amazing. I think, yeah. <laughs> Cool. And you'll find a way, you'll find a way for it to follow. Yeah. You can monetize anything, I'm convinced of that as yeah. well. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um.